David, could we start the live stream? And if you could just let us know in the chat bar when we're uh, up and ready to go. And thank you, David. Joe, if you're there, we've just got an empty desk um, um, where uh, uh, for you. Okay. Um, Angelica, could we have apologies for absence, please? Yes, good morning. We've got apologies for absence from Maureen Vieira, Stella Scott and Michael Lucking, who's been substituted today by Pete Edwards. Thank you. Thanks, Angelica. And I believe we've also got uh, an observer today, Adrian Orrell, um, who's here with Marie um, Crowley. Adrian, just want to say hello and in introduce yourself to everybody. I don't actually think they've both logged on at the moment. Are they not here Chair. yet? No, okay. sorry. <laughs> All right, no problem. So welcome, Adrian, when you do uh, when you do get here. OK, um, declarations of interest. If we have any declarations over and above those that we've already been made aware of, um, could we have those, please? OK, I, uh, I can't see anybody uh, there, so there's no declarations of interest. If we can move on to the um, minutes of the previous meeting, um, you will all have had a copy of the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, so uh, if anybody does have any uh, comments they'd like to make on them, um, they could make them know. Vaughan, I see you've got your hand up. Before we come to you, uh, Joe Batty did uh, uh, make some comments about the minutes of the February meeting. Um, I can just reread and just read a statement that she sent us. Um, I've reread the minutes of the February board meeting, to which I suggested I would offer an amendment. On rereading them, I have no additions or amends to make. So, in the matters arising today, can you convey that, please? Um, there we go. Joe, good morning. I was just reading your comments about the minutes from the February board. Um, so. Um, OK, so Vaughan, if you want to uh, um, yeah. you have your hand up, please, Vaughan. Yeah, uh, right. I've sent a, a list of things to uh, Angelica, but uh, I'll go through them anyway, just to, uh, for the record, page two, uh, item one, uh, about uh, Stuart and myself expressing views and concerns on health and safety issues uh just if you can add to that sentence uh, public usage of the proposed canal bridge design using the canal towpath to access because that's that's our concern really <clears throat> just if that could be added in using the canal towpath to access it's nothing personal on the bridge design itself it's just the towpath access um and then okay. uh, in the same, oh well, same paragraph, it should be discussed at stakeholder group meetings. That's line four. Uh, just going down uh, one, two, one, the first bullet point, uh, it's so it should be a was because it's uh, the consent. I think it should be a was, not a were. Uh, uh, update on progress. Let me see page. Uh, page four, um, the uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, the fifth, fifth bullet point. Uh, I, I did. I've not really understood that. Tom confirmed that the Broad Street Bridge design used in the consultation was the only one acceptable to the key stakeholders. Well, it was subject to a voting system. <coughs> so. Uh, I think, uh, uh, as far as I understand it, key stakeholders ordered the designs in prefer preference uh, order. Uh, but I mean, I wasn't party to that meeting. You'll probably tell me different. <clears throat> um, 
but uh, that little paragraph I think could could be reviewed. I think. Um, uh, Paul, can we can we just let Tom um, comment on on yeah. that? You, are, you okay, Tom? Do you want to just come in on that? Yeah. Yes, that's fine, Chair. It was just to make the point um, that phrase that it was um, except only one acceptable to all key stakeholders. It's because the key stakeholders had objected to the other options that were available. As in the landowner at that point, as you know, Chair, wasn't happy with the alternative. So therefore, they, they said effectively no to it. So that was the point that was being raised. Um, yeah. I do agree with Vaughan. It was subject to a scoring uh, system, which was how we came up with the the um, ultimate design that was proposed to, to the public. Um, but it was the point that the other alternatives weren't acceptable to one or other of the stakeholders at that point. Thanks, Tom. Tom, in terms of the, the minutes for what was actually said, though, is is that a true record of what was said at the meeting? That's what was said, Chair. Whether or not um, I, I can take on board Vaughan's comments in discussion with him later, but yeah, that's what was actually said at the meeting, Chair. Okay. Thank, thank you, Tom. Right. Vaughan, can well, we I might be wrong. Then. I might be wrong if that's what was said, but uh, you know, it's, okay. It's, and and Gaelica, do you want to uh, just come in there, please? Yeah, I just want to clarify. I'm going to check the minutes because I can only record what was actually said at the meeting. So yeah. I will check um, that those paragraphs are correct before coming back to the next meeting. Thanks, Angelica. OK, thanks. Just the okay. bullet point. Uh, sorry, yeah, Richard, the bullet point below about Britannia Road Bridge. Third line should, I think it should be Britannia Road and not Bridge Street. The landing of the bridge on Bridge Street it should be Britannia Road. OK. Uh, and then just that's it, I think. As far as the minutes go, I've got some of those on the, the milestones, but we can do those later. OK. Um, yep. th thank you for bringing those, those to our attention, Vaughan. And Gaelica, what's the, what's the best way to to deal with that then please um in to do it all at the same time if it's changes in the minutes itself it's got to be done all at the same time and and as as i said before the minutes are just to reflect what was actually said at the meeting so i'm not quite sure when what vaughan is meaning whether it means later on in the agenda for the program milestones or what's actually written in the minutes he it, just needs will, to clarify yeah it, it will be the later on for the um for the milestones but in terms of the minutes um obviously there was the first item that that he raised where i do recall that it was the the landing on the toe yeah. path. so that can and i think should be changed to reflect that the comment uh that tom made it, it is actually what was said at the meeting so that needs to that needs to stay doesn't it yeah Okay, Jeremy, did, right. you want, did you want to come in there, or are you? Well, you thank okay? you, Richard. Just ever so briefly. Um, so, look, the, the, the grammar, of course, we we need to correct. I mean, there are some um, some grammatical errors, and thank you for pointing those out. We changed those. Um, I think we've accepted um, some of the things that are said. So, I think um, we go away and we amend those. Um, we will check whether it should be Britannia Road rather than Bridge Street. I, I personally are am ignorant of that, but um, you know, if it's Britannia Road, then that's what the minute needs to say. And um, we'll amend those and um, recirculate them. Angelica, is that right? OK, thank you very much, Jeremy. Yeah. Um, so could we have a proposal, please, for uh, for the minutes? Uh, thank you, Carol. And a <coughs> second. Uh, oh, sorry, Carol. Yeah, could I just come in on there? Sorry, I'm on my phone. I'm, I'm away. I can't get on the laptop. Um, you know, the tr problem is they're not really verbatim minutes and it's very difficult to capture every single thing. I mean, yes, the the, um, uh, the grammar, yes, that can be changed, but we can't really change uh, minutes from another meeting if you weren't there. You know what I mean? It's, it's <laughs> You have to accept that the people that were at the meeting will accept those minutes. So it is, it is difficult, but not verbatim, but happy to uh, propose them as they are changed. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Vaughan, you've put your got your hand up again oh sorry i didn't mean to no carry on sorry okay uh, well i'm going to ask for a seconder so you can you can keep your hand up and second them if you want yeah i'll second i'll second the uh, amended version <laughs> all right thank you thanks. thank you very much Vaughan. and we'll do a vote on um on those by exception so if anybody has any problems if they could just raise their hand and
make it known, please. Okay, the only person with the hand up is Vaughan. Vaughan, as you seconded them, I've taken you're not objecting, but thank you very much. Okay, um, if we could move on to the uh, programme milestones, then please, uh, Steve Birkinshaw. Thank you, Chair. So, progress since uh, the last meeting in February uh, in respect to the stable block, we we had hoped to have awarded contract in March. Um, that's now being deferred to April. Um, and when Tom gives a detailed update uh, on the projects, uh, I'm sure he can explain uh, in, in more depth, but we don't actually, it's not any fundamental issue. It's just an issue around um, signing the legals on what is a very significant contract. In respect to the West Park Leisure Hub, we're still um, stalled. Steve, um, do you want to just let Tom? Oh, come if he come wishes to, there. yes. Tom. Sorry, Steve, I don't want to contradict you, but just for the minute, no. um, the legal agreement has been signed. It's only been signed in the last couple of days. Apologies, you weren't ah, uh, updated on that, no, but no. I want to, to stand correct. No, uh, uh, Tom, that's excellent news. I did write this report two weeks ago. So Appreciate it. <laughs> um, in that case, I'm delighted to actually report as an update to the milestones that the contract for state work has been signed, and therefore that project is now fully on date, uh, on target. Um, and many thanks, Tom, for that update. Um, in respect to the West Park Leisure project, we are still sort of stuck in the cleft stick of waiting for final decisions on bridge design in order to be able to progress the waterside element. Um, and that is essentially where we are with that project. In respect to the Galaxy Row redevelopment, there were no milestones expected in March. And in respect to the Long Eaton Walking and Cycling Network and the Long Eaton High Street project, um, the next milestones for those projects are to achieve project summary, and those indeed are the next items on the agenda for consideration by the board. Thank you very much, Steve. Has anybody got any questions for Steve about um, project milestones? Okay, thank you. If we could, thanks for the update, Steve. If we could move on to the High Street project summary then, please. Thank you, Chair. I'm very pleased uh, to be able to bring to you a project summary on the High Street project which with a total value of £10.7 million is over 40% of the entire Town Deal project. Uh, board members will recall that we have extended this project to include not just the High Street, but also additional works along Tamworth Road. And as such, they represent um, a, a major intervention uh, covering but the, the whole of the functional town centre of Long Eaton. This project is very much at the heart of the uh, town investment plan and in particular of what the consultation found were the public priorities in respect of the town deal, which was to improve the uh, range and attractiveness of uh, shops and services in the town centre. Uh, obviously, we won't actually be providing new shops and services as a result of this project, but we will be creating an environment within which uh, we'll be incentivising private sector investment by um, maximising the attractiveness and vitality of the town centre. The uh, cost of benefit ratio um, of this, this project has, has come out, at, uh, sorry, the, the benefit to cost ratio has come out at 1.11 to 1, which is a fairly tight ratio on what is a very large budget. Nevertheless, we have a great deal of confidence in the work that has gone into this. There has been an enormous amount of uh, cost and benefit appraisal uh, to underpin um, those findings. And though we're conscious that that is likely to attract additional scrutiny from government, we, we don't. That's not going to raise a problem with the extent of the work of the business case that we have underpinning that proposition. Um, and on that basis, we commend to the board uh, progression of this project and the submission um, of the project summary to government in order to trigger um, the payment of those town deal monies. Uh, thank you, Steve. 
Could I open this up to um, if anyone has any questions for Steve about the Long Eaton High Street and the um, and the project plan that's been put in, please. Uh, well, I, I can't see anybody there. I did just have one question myself, Steve, which is that we, in terms of the timescales, we're looking to start construction in November 24 and finish construction in December 25. Um, I mean, I know this you will have put a lot of work in on there, but just looking in from the outside, that does seem quite, quite a, tight, uh, a tight schedule. For the actual construction schedule. For the actual construction phase, yes. It's, um, the, I mean, that's the work which our, you know, external consultants as mediated through uh, Derbyshire County Council Highways uh, Department have um, confirmed that that's, they feel that that's a realistic position. Um, I've no doubt that it will be demanding to keep the timetable. Um, and on, on, on that basis, that basis, 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 I think that may be Councillor Carroll Hartford. Uh, some, somebody is, um, we have got some feedback coming from I've somebody. I've just muted the yeah. pulpit. Yeah. Sorry, I've just got in on my laptop. <laughs> I think you need to turn your phone off then, Carol. So, okay. Thank All you. Right. Yes, Chair, I was just reiterating, I'm sure it will be demanding. We've got the assurance from um, the external consultants, ACOM, and the project managers at Derbyshire County Council Highways that they think that it's a realistic target, but it will require um, very close management to achieve. Thank you, Steve. OK, could we, if no one else has any other questions, uh, could we have a proposer, please? Uh, thank you, Maggie. And a seconder. Uh, Vaughan, you got in there just before Tony. Thank you very much, Vaughan. And we will do a, um, a, a vote on this by roll call. So, Angelica, if we can hand over to you, please. Yes, of course. Um, Carol Hart. Four. Maggie Throop. Four. Tony Four. King. Four. Ian Viles. I don't think he's here. Vaughan Morris. Four. Keith Reedman. Four. Marie Crowley. Marie. I'll come back to her. Pete Edwards. Four. Pete Wern. Four. Andrew Mitchell. Four. David Doyle. Four. Stuart Allen. Four. James Gregory. Four. Andrew Saville. Four. Marie Crowley. I just obviously can't get to it. Richard Ledger. Uh, four. Yes, that's been carried. OK, thank, thank you very much, Angelica, and um, thank you very much, everyone, for that. If we move on to the uh, next project then, which is the walking and cycling network. Uh, again, Steve, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, again, I'm very pleased to be able to bring uh, before the board a report um, seeking confirmation of the project summary for the Long Eaton Walking and Cycling project. Uh, the board will be very familiar with the travails we've had over this very important project, um, which seeks to, um, in particular, to link the, the twin assets of Long Eaton Town, as was identified back when we produced the town investment plan uh, of its um, exceptional green space assets in West Park and the canal and the town centre with a view to creating more synergy between the two um, as a, a, a key intervention that, that would really enhance the town. Um, 
we, we're conscious that um, uh, we have yet to actually fully finalise um, designs of bridges, the two bridges incorporated in this project. Um, but we're still uh, engaging with um, some some very interesting options which are available um, for for both the bridges involved in this project, um, which still give us a level of assurance that we, we know that we can achieve the outcomes of the project. But I have to say, it is not as far developed as I think we'd have liked it to have been at this stage. Um, but we're also conscious that we have a um, a government deadline. I want to give um, uh, some hu uh, some uh, uh, mark of appreciation to the council's 151 officer who is in this meeting and may wish to speak on this item, um, Sav de la Roca, who joined the council three weeks ago and in his first week was presented with hundreds of pages of um, business case assessment um, and asked if as a 151 officer he was prepared uh, to assure such projects. Now, in respect to this project, I will point out that the 151 officer did consider it necessary to put some additional items into the risk register to reflect the fact that we do have some additional steps to go through in order to be able to successfully deliver this project. But taking into those into account, um, it's still the view of the council, as confirmed at Council Executive um, just this Tuesday, that we do have a deliverable project here um, and we do have um, re reliable costs, which has been, and I know we've discussed this at the board at some length in the, in the past as well, which has also been um, a difficult point where we're now confident that the costs on this project um, do take account of all all items and, and are a reliable envelope for the delivery of the project as a whole. Uh, and that consequently, that we can demonstrate value for money within the project. We will be doing an additional work, well, clearly we're doing additional work on all projects, but on this project in particular, we know that there is additional work to be done, uh, but we're confident at this stage that we have sufficient confidence to be able to progress the uh, project summary document. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Steve. Um, Sam, Della Rocca, do you want to, um, do you want to just introduce yourself to, to the board here? And um, we can all thank you for your baptism of fire in your first few weeks as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. thank you, Chair. Um, can everybody hear me OK? Sorry, I'm, I'm working with these headphones for the first time, uh, but uh, you're, you're fine. You, you're fine. I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, th yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, Sav Della Rocca, Council's Director for Resources. This is my uh, the end of my third week at the Council. And as Steve said uh, on day one, as we had a walk down the canal and he showed me the uh, the bridge and the, all the different options we were looking at, he said, by the way, tomorrow I'll send you an outline business case that I'd like you to review and see whether you're willing to approve. So that was my baptism of fire, Chair. I think as Steve uh, summed it up really well, really, we're in a position where we're not as far advanced as we'd like to be in terms of having dotted the I's and, 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 and crossed the T's. But I think what we've got is are sufficient signs of a, a viable project. So I was happy to support its recommendation to the council executive. I'm very pleased that the executive have, have approved it. No one wants us to lose the opportunity of this funding. And uh, there is more work to do um, over the coming uh, days and months for us to get ourselves in a position where we've got what feels like a more final project. Steve is right to say that I did add a paragraph in the risk and mitigation measures, which are on your uh, on your page is page 27. I did I did highlight um, some additional text there, um, which I felt for transparency purposes it was right to point out uh, to the government, and uh, we will see whether we get any questions on it, which I know we'll be happy to answer. So I think that's it from me, Chair. Was happy to support where we are, but clearly everybody already is aware that there is further work to do, and I, I think everybody understands that. Thank you, Seth. Seth, can I just ask what was the extra risk that you that you put into the um, into the risk register? Um, it was, Chair, if I'm right, it was uh, risk two, because there are other options that we can that we can look at that we might not have necessarily considered in the in the outline business case, and uh, falling out of that, we would want clearly to, if we did look at other options, we'd want to make sure that our 
uh, the impact of the scheme in the VFM assessment was refreshed. So it was risk two and three. Okay, VFM value for money. I yes, think. yes, sir. Value for okay. money, yes. All right. Thank you very much, Sal. Um, could I open this up? Does anybody have any questions that they'd uh, like to raise on the walking and cycling network project? Uh, yeah. uh, Stuart, Stuart Allen. Uh, yes, Vaughan and I have had a good look at the relocated Britannia Road Bridge. I'm curious to know whether any negotiations have gone on about designing the ramp uh, and fitting it into the customer's premises, please. Uh, we've had a look at it and, and to see how, how one could fit one in, and it, it's pretty tight. Thank you, Stuart. Um, obviously, that's detail of the actual design, and the detail of the design isn't isn't what we're talking about today. But um, Tom, I'm sure we'll be happy to to answer you. Happy to respond, Chair. Yes. Um, what I would say is the council's in the process of obtaining quotations for a design consultant um, to look at those exact issues and look at a uh, a concept layout for that revised location. Um, that will consider such matters as the location of the ramp, um, obviously, along with the wider design of the bridge. So that work is ongoing. And um, Stuart's absolutely right. Uh, we need to look at these considerations quite quickly to um, determine its feasibility. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Stuart. Um, uh, Vaughan Morris. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. All right. OK. Um, yeah, on the uh, risk register, um, well, a couple of questions really. One is about the consultation, whether uh, any, there is any feedback on the public consultation for Bridge Street, uh, Broad Street, the Broad Street Bridge uh, replacement. Um, and of course, that public consultation only presented one option. <clears throat> on the risk register, item nine, there's a mention of Broad Street Bridge option five. Uh, unless I'm misunderstanding something. When the when the design uh, was voted for by the key stakeholders, there were only three three designs on the table. Uh, just wondering what the option five is uh, and whether there's any feedback from the public on the consultation. Just, okay, uh, so that if we could address those two points separately, please, Vaughan. Gary, yeah. do you want to talk about the consultation? Uh, yes, happy to, uh, Chair. Uh, morning, everyone. Yeah, the consultation, just as a recap for, to remind everyone on the Broad Street Bridge, which presented an option. Uh, that ran from uh, mid-February through to the Sunday just gone, so it's only just closed. The, the short answer, Vaughan, is that we don't we haven't got the analysis complete on that uh, that consultation yet. Um, there's obviously the uh, quantitative part, but there's quite a lot of qualitative uh, bits because we've had quite a lot of comments, uh, free text comments on that, so we don't have the the details of that. I can say, because I appreciate the board members are interested, um, that the kind of emerging picture from some of the uh, interim uh, updates that I uh, saw was that there was generally um, sort of support for uh, the bridge, but there were a whole range and mix of views and there was a polarisation of those views. But in general terms, there seemed to be uh, a, a slightly more in, in support and in favour of the uh, of the bridge. But as I say, we haven't completed that analysis. We haven't got the final results uh, together, collated and, and analysed. And I'm sure in the thematic comments, there'll be a whole range of uh, factors that we'll want to understand and to, to get to grips with. But generally speaking, there was support. As Richard previously mentioned, obviously, that's not the, the focus of the decision uh, before the board today. Um, we When we have completed that analysis um clearly happy to share that uh with the board and we can circulate that round uh in due course but uh hopefully that answers your question Vaughan, on on the consultation thank you yes sir. yeah thank, thank you Gary. uh in terms of your second question Vaughan, which was just the detail of which option whether it was option five or uh, obviously most of the board members won't have even seen the 
um, the various options. But Steve, do you want to um, just address that, please? Thank you, Chair. Yes, I hope I can be uh, helpful on that front. Um, a, a lot of these options depend on um, agreement with various particular landowners, and, and for those reasons, I hope the board will be understanding if we, you know, we're not specific uh, about you know too many of those details, because you know that is a matter of, of, of external negotiation. However, option five, as included in the business case, was a broader bridge in the lo in the location of the current bridge, mm -hmm. and that was tested to see how it functioned on, on a value for money case. Um, mm -hmm. And if it was buildable, it would function well on a value for money case. But yeah. the buildability would depend um, on the uh, agreement of the relevant landowners. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for clarifying that, Steve. Vaughan, are, are you happy with that? Yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks. OK, thank you very much. Um, Stuart, you still got your hand up. Is Do you have another question that you'd wanted to ask? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> OK, all right. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else have anything that they'd like to ask about the uh, walking and cycling network? OK, could I have a proposer, uh, please? Happy to propose that, Chairman. Thank you, Carol. And a seconder? I'm happy to second, Chair. Thank you, Maggie. You just pipped Tony to the post again. I'm sorry, Tony. Do you want to swap? <laughs> All right, and we'll do a, uh, a vote by roll call again. So if I could hand over to you, please, Angelica. Yep, no problem. Councillor Hart. Four. Maggie Throop. Four. Tony King. Four. Ian Viles. Yeah, he's not here, is he? Um, Vaughan Morris. Yes, four. Keith Reedman. Four. Marie Crowley. Marie. Four. Oh, lovely. Four. Thank you. Pete Edwards. Four. Pete Wern. Four. Andrew Mitchell. <coughs> Andrew Mitchell. David Doyle. Four. Stuart Allen. Four. James Gregory. Four. Andrew Saville. Four. Just try Andrew Mitchell. OK, Richard Ledger. Uh, four. That's carried then, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angelica. And thank you very much, everyone. And, you know, um, thank you to Steve and all of the his team and all the officers at the council. Um, I know they've had a lot of work to do to get these over the line. And um, it's nice to see that we did actually do it. So uh, I'd just like to extend my thanks to all the officers at the council for all of their hard work that was put into that. Okay, um, if we could hand over please to Tom for an update on um, progress on the various projects, Tom. Thank you, Chair. As usual, I'll start with the stable block. Um, as confirmed earlier, the Borough Council now has a legal agreement signed in place with its appointed principal contractor, Jay Tomlinson. There's been some pre-start meetings held with them um, to discuss some of the details of the, the work. Um, work with them is expected to commence on site um, on the 3rd of April, um, and that will obviously be the first uh, major project of the town's deal uh, to actually start its construction phase. I'm also pleased to confirm that the council has secured um, funding from the government's public sector decarbonisation scheme. Um, agreement for this has been signed off in the form of a grant offer letter, uh, and we'll continue to liaise with government over the, the terms of that agreement and ensuring that the project is delivered in accordance with uh, the bid requirements. I um, should also add that uh, the council officers have uh, accepted a quotation for installing a time-lapse video camera system that's going to be put in um, to monitor progress of the scheme, and this will uh, inform future comms releases uh, about the project as it uh, develops. Happy to take any questions, Chair. Uh, any questions for Tom? Um, I'm, I'm very, very interested about the time-lapse video. I think that's a great idea. 
and um, you know that's a good one tom thank you on that okay great stuff no questions uh, on that so far okay moving on there isn't a lot to uh, to add chair to the um the two projects or the two projects that form part of the west park um scheme we're obviously waiting for the um, consultation and, and further progress of the bridge design before we can uh, progress the waterfront and uh, that project in terms of design. Uh, the car park, as we know last time, has achieved planning consent. And again, that will be tied into the final business case that forms part of that overall project. Um, so I'll move on, if that's OK, Chair, straight to, uh, to Galaxy Row. There's been further meetings held with the uh, the planning consultant and we're anticipating that a outline planning application will be submitted within the next week. The uh, RFI notices served as part of the CPO process went out, as we know from last time, on the, the 6th of the, uh, February. Uh, that 21 day period is now expired and we are um, building in the feedback from that exercise into the statement of reasons that will form part of the formal CPO drafting um, as that progresses. Uh, moving on. Yeah, we've had further meetings with the um, legal advisor and procurement advisor as the council looks to start its formal procurement for a development partner. Um, this is ex expected to take the form of a competition with dialogue process. Um, and the first stage of that will be to send out invitations to tender to a, a range of different potential development partners. We've also appointed a, uh, a QS and had some further costings put to the scheme since last time to look at those construction costs. This was really to give ourselves um, some reassurance that the uh, amount of subsidy on offer will be sufficient. Um, and we've had results of that back and uh, it has indeed confirmed that. So we, we've got a high degree of confidence regarding the, uh, the budget for the scheme now, Chair. Um, finally, on that one, we are about to complete on the purchase of 43 to 43A Derby Road. Um, officers attended a viewing of the property earlier this week and a completion date has been set for the 31st of March. Happy to take any questions on that one, Chair. Tom, any questions for the Galaxy Road? Tom, can I ask, what is 43 and 43A? Which... Sorry, I beg your pardon. I think I may have misquoted that. It's 43 to 43A. It's the uh, the full address of the property because it's not just the uh, commercial property on the ground floor. Um, there are also some residential properties uh, above as the building stands. And which, which one is that? Um, it is the um, one adjacent to stage one. Uh, so it's a shop fitting business. Um, it may be identified easier to the wider public. Um, that's now been uh, been vacated and the council will be acquiring the property with vacant possession. Thank you, Tom. Um, any other questions regarding Galaxy Road? OK, Tom. OK, moving on. I um, don't think I've got a great deal to add to the discussion that's already been had regarding Broad Street Bridge. Obviously, officers will, will be analysing the, um, the responses that were given from the quotation. And uh, that information will be fed into a future options assessment um, for the bridge as things progress. Tanya Road Bridge, again, we've discussed, there's been further discussed with uh, Futures Housing. We are in the process of obtaining those quotations that I mentioned before. That will lead to an appointment of a, a design consultant, and uh, we will then progress a feasibility um, design for the site. Officers will also look at instructing surveys that will be required for the revised location. Again, this will be looking at things like ground conditions, um, buildability issues, and making sure that the, um, the alternative location is suitable. Thank you. Any any questions on the bridges and um, walking, cycling? No. OK, Tom. Um, I think that's it, Chair. Obviously, on the high street, we've um, seen that the uh, project summary document has been approved. That will be submitted to government. Officers will be continuing to liaise with the County Council regarding the next steps for the scheme. Um, this will include looking at um, obtaining fees for the uh, design consultant for the next stage, which will start the sort of technical design stage for the scheme. OK, thank you. Thank you very much for that, Tom. Yep. Um, OK, any any questions? Thanks, Tom. Um, could we move on to communications plan then, please. Um, over to you, Gary. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Richard. 
So uh, since the last meeting, there's been uh, various media releases, um, including uh, linked to the High Street uh, project, uh, the walking and cycling project, and also the publicising the start of work that uh, uh, Tom's just explained around the stable blocks. So, uh, and that's that those have received um, social media and uh, and and other media interest. Um, there's all been all the general uh, uh, updates of promotion material and keeping those stocked. Uh, but in addition to that, EBC Today, the spring edition, um, landed in March on uh, residents' doorsteps, and that included uh, a full page update on the Long Eaton Town deal. Um, and there's also uh, versions of that digitally available uh, on, on our website, the council's website, in addition to the, those hard copies. I think Richard, you attended uh, the Long Eaton Chamber of Trade uh, earlier in March, um, and there was also a Long Eaton District 50 Plus Forum uh, as well. But, uh, that's, yeah. that's right, Gary. I did yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, looking forward, there are some again various other uh, partner and public meetings, um, and uh, we'll also be looking forward to the summer. EBC today. Uh, we're in strike, slightly restricted uh, period at the council because it is now pre-election period. But uh, comms promotion where they can, uh, in general terms, will continue. But uh, that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Has anyone got any questions about um, communication strategy? Uh, Vaughan. Yeah, just uh, wondering how you got on at the over fifties forum, Richard with the uh, all of the projects uh, i answered a lot of questions that were nothing to do with the um, town's fund i think is um, uh, um right. which i think is uh, it's always quite daunting because two of my ex-teachers um were there <laughs> pete, pete Wern for physics and uh, david penny for, for biology so it's always yeah. uh, i always feel like that naughty school boy <laughs> yeah Good, good. No, no bright ideas though coming through, were there? Um, it's. I mean, the, there's obviously there's a a lot of input from a lot of people who have a lot of experience of the town. Um, yeah. You yeah. know that that is always um, always very welcome. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but perhaps Pete, you know, do you want to uh, make a comment on that, Pete Wern? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, my camera isn't working, but <clears throat> thanks very much, Richard, for coming in. Um, your uh, appearance was actually much appreciated by everyone there, and we do report on the town deal at each of our newsletters, which go out four times a year. Uh, there is, as you noticed, a lot of real uh, interest, and uh, you've got grilled quite a bit. I thought you did very, very well. Um, maybe I'm a bit biased, but it was excellent. And we do hope you'll come again at some time. You'll certainly be very welcome. Uh, thank you, Pete. And I uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'd be delighted to um, obviously keep the various groups informed. And, you know, Gary, if you can keep offering, you know, you can offer me up to go out and talk to people. I'm happy, happy to do that. Thank you. Just add that we didn't get any leaflets, or we were meant to get, I think, uh, some people who were champions. So Richard um, held the the line there, but we were hoping for some leaflets through Joe uh, Marples at Derby at Matlock. Something went wrong there, but if if, if there is anything to include in our mail outs, you know we would certainly be happy to have it. Yeah, well, we can uh, we can get you some some leaflets. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll ask Stuart to reach out to you uh, outside the meeting. OK, thank you. Thanks, Pete. Thank you, Pete. Um, OK, Gary, have you anything That's else? It. Thanks okay. very much. All right, any questions for Gary on communications? No? OK, thank you very much. Uh, if we move on to date of next meeting. Now, um, we've actually, I'm very glad to say, um, with the um, approval for submission of the business cases, we've completed very much the first stage of, well, second stage. First stage was submission of the, 
the investment plan of the town's fund process. Um, so we're actually, um, uh, whilst we're obviously we've got a uh, election period coming up, and we're also waiting really for feedback from government on the um, business cases that we've submitted. Um, so we will not be having a meeting as scheduled in April. And the next scheduled board meeting is actually going to be the um, 2nd of June uh, 2023, which will be the annual meeting as well for the Long Eaton Town Deal Board, um, where we will also be asking to elect uh, chair and vice chair. Um, so, um, so the next meeting will take place on the 2nd of June, um, which brings us to the, the end of today's meeting. I would just like to once again thank the officers for all of their hard work in actually getting the um, getting the business cases submitted. Um, Maggie, you, would you like to um, say a few words? Yes, thank you, Chair. I think you just about to take the words out of my mouth because I was about to say you, you did say thank you to the officers for getting the last two business cases over the line. But I think you know, we can't ignore the huge amount of work that's gone on over the last like, two and a half years, getting us to the end of stage two. And it's been incredible. So I want to give my thanks. And I'm sure the whole board will agree to all the officers and to the project champions, but also to you, Richard, because you've put a tremendous amount of work in. I don't think we see half the work that you've put into this overall. So you do it quietly, you do it behind the scenes, and then once a month you come out and you, you keep us all in order. So I want to say a huge thank you to you, but also to the officers as well, and to everybody who's got us to the end of this uh, second stage. I know at times it hasn't been easy, but I know in a few years' time, we'll look back and know it's all been worthwhile. So just wanted to put that on the records. Thanks. Thank you very much, Maggie. It's much appreciated. Um, I have to say, I still think I'm, um, I don't know what I'm doing here, but, <laughs> you know, I do my best, which is, uh, but yes, absolutely. You don't indicate you don't know what you're doing, so yeah. <laughs> you but, look yeah. as if you're in complete control. Yeah, thank you. And obviously, you know, thanks also to all the members of the board and the project champions. Um, I'm always astonished at how much work everybody does manage to put in and you know from the comments that we see in the board meeting it's obvious how much how much work and how much research the board members do so thank you very much for that um so um uh carol hart you've got your hand up would you like to um yeah, well, I suppose I'm going to just come in at the last minute. Um, you know, I've enjoyed being vice chairman um, and I think we've got on very well. <laughs> One or two uh, hiccups, but, uh, you know, generally you've got to know um, more about local government, which is, you know, very frustrating at times when uh, when you, you've got your own private business. But, uh, you know, so um, who knows, it uh, could be my last meeting, but hopefully not. Um, uh, all I can say is that whatever happens, these projects now are moving on. And I think has been said, the officers, I did say to the executive um, uh, in the week, um, when you look at the paperwork they've had to produce uh, and Sav having to come in, um, you know, his first couple of weeks to read through all the paperwork, it's just absolutely incredible. So, yeah, huge thanks and uh, look forward to seeing the projects going forward, whether I'm the vice chair or not, but hopefully I'll, uh, I'll still be around. Thank you, Richard. Carol and um, uh, Michael Powell, I think we have to give you an opportunity. Um, I, I'm going to like to follow, if I may, what Carol has said. It won't be, I don't know whether I'm going to get uh, elected again. I won't be because I have decided family matters are more important just right now. So I am not standing for the council. So nobody can vote for or against me. And so I'm, I'm able to say it. And I, I know that... Uh, uh, we can't vote on this meeting, but behind the scenes and at the executive, we do spend a lot of time. And the last papers that we had on Tuesday 
were over 400 pages. So you can see how difficult behind the scenes, saying behind the scenes it is. And I, I, I know virtually everybody here and I do thank them for all what they do. Uh, but I, this will now be the last meeting because we're not holding the April one uh, and enjoying with the work with you all. I'm really pleased. So thank you all. And I shall probably have to look on on the uh, stuff that comes out on whatever, you know, that you're sending it. So um, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, thank you, Michael, for you know your help on this, and you know many, very, very many years of service as well. So, um, Tony King. Thank you, Chair. Can I say that in in the times of of political uncertainty with the with the borough, uh, <coughs> I shall be still available um, for for the next phase of the board as as DCC aren't up for election this, this time. I've got two more. I have two more years, so uh, you will get some continuity anyway. Thank you, thank you, Tony. Okay, um, Vaughan Morris, did you want to speak, Vaughan, or were you, you just um, okay? I was just going to say it's been really good working with Mike Powell and. Um, wish him and his family all the best that was all thanks uh, ab absolutely Vaughan I, I echo that as I'm sure everybody on the board on the board does so th thank you very much Mike okay um well I'd like to um draw the meeting to so, a close sorry, then so, please sorry sorry chair my hand wasn't a repeat hand it wasn't one of the things there but I was just sorry. wondering Sorry, I was just making a, a, putting out a suggestion whether come the AGM in June, we can go back to in-person meetings rather than virtual meetings. But I'll just leave, throw that open and uh, perhaps it can be discussed uh, at, uh, by you know, with yourself and with Jeremy and uh, the, the vice chair and with the officers. Um, personally, I, I would like that certainly for the, for, for the, for the annual meeting. I think that would be an excellent idea um jeremy are you nodding in approval yes i'm sure we can do that if that's the wish i don't see an impediment to that we can find a venue and um we can get that organized but perhaps Fantastic. we can leave the precise location you know to sort outside of this meeting i th thank you very much for that suggestion maggie i think excellent and i'll actually get to meet everybody in person um which will be be a pleasure okay so um if we could draw the meeting to an end please and if we could just close the live stream thank you very much